What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. So I was browsing on YouTube for ProPress videos and to my surprise there wasn't a video covering everything about ProPress and what it's good for. ProPress is relatively new to the market and a lot of do-it-yourselfers and plumbers still don't know about it, what it's for and how it works. So I want to clarify that in this video today. I'll also be giving some tips and tricks throughout the video, so whenever you do have the opportunity to use a ProPress system, you'll have them in mind. ProPress could be used for residential, commercial or industrial applications. It works on copper, plastic, even metal pipes such as iron and stainless steel for potable water systems, heating or even gas lines. In this demonstration, I'll only be covering copper to copper connections for potable water lines. So what exactly is ProPress? To better explain what a Viga fitting is, I cut one open to expose the inner working so you could better understand what's going on inside. Unlike soldered joints, pressed fittings rely on an EPDM o-ring to ensure a watertight connection. A popular fitting they could easily be compared to are shark bite fittings, which also have a ceiling ring inside, but aren't joined the same way. Pro press fittings, as the name states, are pressed using a battery operated tool such as this one to create a leak free joint. These fittings are able to withstand 600 psi of pressure for water applications and 200 psi for air, which is outstanding. There are many different varieties of press tools and kits for each specific job you're doing. For example, if you're pressing a 4 inch copper line, you'll need an 18 volt press tool and not a 12 volt with the correct crimping ring to get the job done. Since there are so many possible combinations, it would be impossible for me to give them all out here, so I'll link a file in the description box below to all the combos for your info. Apart from that, the tool is quite foolproof when it comes to using it, which is why it's so easy to integrate onto a job site. A kit like this is pretty expensive at around $2000 and can go up pretty quick depending on the batteries and attachments you get with it, but it sure does pay off in the long run for many reasons. However, as much as this sounds great, this system does have some downsides to it like every other system. So let me go through all the pros and cons about it so you could judge by yourself whether this could be something for you or not. Starting with the cons, first up is the price. Like I mentioned before, the price could go well above the 2k mark depending on which kind of kit you're getting. A lot of heating and potable water systems are PEX nowadays which are far quicker to join by either crimping or expanding them. However, some building codes still require copper mains and branches and this is where the press tool shines. Something else to consider when talking about cost is maintenance. The tool doesn't need any maintenance per se, but will ask for a calibration after 50,000 cycles by blinking a green light. Meaning you'll need to bring it to your nearest service dealer, costing you anywhere from $250 to $500. Adding up to the costs are the fittings. If we compare a 1 inch elbow with 5 other types of fittings, the Vigas are the second most expensive ones under the shark bites. Once these fittings are pressed, they can't be moved or undone, meaning that if you made a mistake, you'll need to restart it and it could get costly very quickly. PEX, for example, allows for the fittings to be rotated even after they've been crimped, which is one of the many reasons why it's so popular. And lastly, the fact that the fittings rely on a rubber o-ring could cause confusion, as we all know that rubber does deteriorate after time. However, the o-rings are pre-lubricated as they're manufactured, which addresses the drying out problem that these types of fittings have. Now onto the pros and why this tool is such a game changer in the plumbing industry. Anytime working in a commercial building, a hot permit is required. This permit allows you to use a soldering torch at a predetermined time during the day to make sure all the smoke alarms in the work zone are covered or closed not to activate the sprinkler system. Also, you typically need to wait one hour after your last solder to make sure that nothing catches fire. These procedures are costly and time consuming compared to a press tool which requires no flames, thus no hot work permit. 
Something else that makes this tool indispensable when working on copper is the fact that it could press a wet joint. We all know that soldering with water in the pipes is next to impossible and emptying out the lines could get costly and time consuming. Yes, there are all sorts of pipe plugging devices to use when soldering on wet lines, but they are very expensive, so these are all things to take into account. Other than that, the tool is super easy to use and learn, creates reliable connections at half the time, and only requires the tool and fittings to complete a joint. Now, let's press some fittings together. Before starting, make sure to have a pair of safety glasses on because pieces could go flying and be dangerous, so glasses on. So first off, you'll need to cut the pipe. I highly suggest using any of these types of cutters as they allow for a straight cut. If you cut with a handsaw for example, it might get cut crooked and not seal properly because of this. Whichever way you choose to cut the pipe, you'll need to prep it before installing the fittings as you don't want to tear the delicate o-ring that's inside. To ensure this, you'll need an inner outer deburring tool like this one right here. Deburring does two important things. It removes any sharp edge that might have formed on the outside during the cut and removes the inner burr which prevents turbulence inside the pipe that could eventually cause leaks, so this step can't be skipped. Once the pipe is clean and deburred, I highly recommend marking the correct depth before the final crimp. So what I do is I use the fitting itself by inserting it all the way and marking it like this. So that I know that while I'm crimping it, it's at the right spot. It's also good practice to verify that all the o-rings are actually there. I've already crimped a couple of fittings with missing o-rings and trust me, it's not worth the hassle of restarting. If you're working on different size pipes, changing the heads is super simple and quick. Just release the locking pin and change the head for the correct one. Open up the jaws and place them over the ridged part of the fitting. This is where the crimp needs to be done. Now, here's where some beginners make a mistake. The tool needs to stay absolutely straight during the pressing or it'll partially crimp the fitting and guarantee you a leak. I purposely crimped the fitting with the tool in the incorrect position to show you the difference between both the correct and incorrect way of doing it. So go ahead and give the fitting a last visual to see if it lines up with the line you made and press the trigger. Most modern press tools will complete the crimp automatically after the trigger has been pushed, so there's no guessing whether you pressed it long enough or not. At this point, I always like marking an X on each crimp as a visual reference to make sure I don't miss any. And finally, testing. ProPress fittings have a neat feature called Smart Connect which allows for water or air to leak out of the fitting during pressure tests. 
Some brands of press fittings don't have this feature and won't let any of these two pass during tests and would leak afterwards once the walls were closed up. These fittings could easily be identified by a colored mark on the fitting. An unpressed fitting can easily be detected with a water test and fixed on the spot without having to empty out the system, which is really neat. Also, unlike typical soldered lines, there's no need to worry about flushing out any remaining flux in the lines once the installation is done, which saves a lot of time and water. And that pretty much covers the ProPress system for copper water lines. Let me know your opinion on this system by commenting down below why and where you would use it. And as usual, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and like the video to show your appreciation. And until the next one, thanks for watching.